Alright, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am riding the- I don't even remember the last time I rode this thing, honestly, but it's always fun to ride it. For today's video, we're going to be doing a little shoot with, you know, it's an MV type of day, so we got my rush over here, and we also got, if you guys remember, the Draxer, the America Edition, and all that. These are the two bikes that pretty much have that carbon hub this is like an 800 and that's kind of like the big brother of it the leader bike but they're both kind of like special editions and all that cool stuff so it'll be a fun little shoot that we're shooting for mv and all but while we do that i'm gonna be doing my one year review on the rush it's been a year almost a year i got it in january of this year we're almost there so i'm gonna be doing like the one year review on this thing and tell you guys how my experience has been with it so far because uh, honestly, I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. It definitely has grown on me over time. I love the way it looked and everything, but when I like had it and was putting parts on it on, and stuff like that, I was a little frustrated because, you know, this is a very rare limited bike. If I could explain this bike in any way, this would be like the Pagani of motorcycles. You don't just casually take out your Pagani and you don't modify, you know what I mean? This is kind of built to perfection as is, so... But you guys know me, I gotta mess around with them, gotta modify them and uh, make them more personalized because I don't like sock vehicles. Also, what do you guys think? I added a few touches of gold titanium <laughs> stuff. I really want to do more gold, gold titanium bolts and all, but I feel like I don't want to do too much. Gold can't be too much, just like you see back here. This thing sounds crazy. If you guys missed my decibel meter video, this bike is actually one of my loudest motorcycles. This one, the H2R, and the Fireblade. Those are my three loudest motorcycles. It's very surprising. I thought the R1 and the Aprilia would be part of the loudest ones, but I also knew like the Fireblade and the H2R would be like the loudest too. I just didn't expect this to be at that level too. <laughs> oh, what did I just do? Whoa, did I just set up like launch control or something? I literally just did a like mini burnout over there. I do actually miss riding that direction. That thing was a perfect uh, vehicle for the streets. If you guys remember, it has that clutch that you pretty much don't need to use your clutch at all. It's almost like an automatic in a way. The only time you use it, I believe... Oh, you don't even have to go to neutral. You just leave it in first gear and it just stops. So, that's nice. One year of having the Rush. My, technically based on MSRP, my second most expensive motorcycle. Let's talk about the obvious. The beauty of this thing. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't think... Uh, there might be one other naked bike that looks really good, but it's not even like one. It's the Ducati Lamborghini one, the Street Fighter Lambo or whatever. That one is absolutely sick. But that one is like a collab with Lamborghini, so it's not directly Ducati. Uh, and there's the KTM Brabus as well. I think those three are by far the best looking naked bikes. You can argue with me all you want. Let me know if I'm missing like any other like really sick limited naked bike, but. The MV Agusta Rush. Actually, we're going to talk about the MV Agusta Asin as well. <laughs> the MV Agusta Rush, the MV Agusta Asin, which is the new Nurburgring replacement. 
that one is also like really really beautiful I definitely think uh, that one is really cool if you guys don't know the difference between the Rush and the Nürburgring and the Assen pretty much the Rush is more of like the pretty one the Nürburgring and the Assen obviously since they're named after tracks they're more track focused but they're both kind of like the top of MV Agusta just this is more uh, kind of like what MV Agusta is motorcycle art and the Nürburgring and the Assen are more like track oriented as I said Uh, personally, I like the Rush better than the Nürburgring and the Assen because mainly of the design. So if you notice the tail on the Draxxer right here, it's the same tail on the Brutale, same tail on the Nür uh, Nürburgring, and the same tail on the Assen as well. So is the headlight. I don't know if the headlight is exactly the same on the Draxxer, but they are the same on all the Brutale 1000, the Nürburgring, and the Assen. They're all the same headlight. What I like about the Rush is that it's the only one that is different. It has a completely different tail. It's like the Super Veloce tail with a completely different redesigned front too. I'd definitely be willing to uh, maybe like get the Asset at some point because that would be really cool. I would definitely get rid of the KTM, uh, my 1290 Super Duke R. Uh, I'm not sure about the new 1390 either. They're not special models, so that's why I'm not like, they just don't fit the collection as much. I got the KTM as my daily, but since I have so many like bikes, I tend to ride one of the special models regardless because you know the daily for the daily for the daily if you know the meme you know what I'm talking about. Literally everything about this bike resembles exotic. You know, from the way it looks to the way it sounds, it might not be like the smoothest ride or uh, the most, I don't know how to say, like, I guess daily bike. But as I said, that's not what it's made for, but it definitely gives you that crazy experience when you're riding it. Here. I saw all the way from the back. I just rode this thing and I couldn't believe how fast it is. It was the fastest bike, uh, naked bike that I've ridden. Uh, this bike hit 200 miles an hour, which is absolutely insane as a naked bike. And then that's when I decided to buy this thing. And I wasn't sure because this was technically my first naked bike. Back then, all I wanted was super sports. That was like my main focus and the uh, bikes I really cared about were all super sports but this kind of like I always saw it online I was like this thing looks sick I absolutely love the fighter jet colors uh, the kind of like gray and it has like a little bit of a gold tint with the yellow hazard kind of design it just looks badass and when I came across uh, you know like somebody selling it I, it was kind of hard to say no I wanted to buy it right after this road and then I was told that it wasn't for sale and not long after it was for sale and that's when I just I was like you know what whatever let's get a naked bike let's dabble in the naked world and see how I end up liking it now this bike still does need a tune we tuned it before we made the custom exhaust all right? so now uh, the back pressure is all messed up because we decatted the pipe so now it's a full straight pipe with that C slip on so it doesn't need a new tune and the plan is to take it to the dyno actually because this thing will sound absolutely amazing on the dyno uh, now the main thing that a lot of, of you guys are going to ask about uh, I'll talk a little bit more about modifying it and all that I already told you guys that it was definitely not the most fun to modify because that's not, they built this bike to stay the way it is they made it look good there's a few things that you can buy on the Envy website which I actually bought a lot of parts from Envy themselves but overall this bike is built pretty much to perfection from the factory and they don't want you messing with it most people's worry with MV including myself which is why I took a while to get an MV because I've always wanted an MV MV is like as I said like that boutique Italian brand it's like you know it just sounds exotic and it is 
So I've always wanted one, but I was always worried about like, hey, if I get one, who's gonna work on him? And thankfully, since I met Jose, the guy on the dragster, he knows all about MV. He's that MV guy. And that kind of made me a lot more willing to get one because then I can ask him for a reference. He knows people that works on MVs and I met my tech which specializes in MVs and stuff like that. So it kind of just worked out. Like that's why I like the full sent it. But also, at the same time, this bike has about, what, 2,000 miles on it right now? And so far, I haven't had any issues. Now, not from wood, I know that technically these bikes are not supposed to be like daily driven or ridden but so far it's been great like nothing abnormal same basic maintenance stuff it still at least has a wet clutch so i feel like if anything it's gonna be way less maintenance than my v4r and probably my h2 and definitely less than the hr because the hr requires like an engine rebuild every 15 hours or something ridiculous like that This bike requires uh, so far less maintenance than some of my other bikes, even though they're supposed to be the unreliable bike. Uh, I would say though, getting parts for this thing is definitely a nightmare. MV is very, very slow with their uh, part delivery and stuff like that. Uh, that would be great if they can, you know, like when you order stuff through MV, if they could take like less time. But I get it, you know what I mean? Like, how many rush owners are buying parts through MV? It's understandable, but it would be also nice to have. I don't know, I guess like faster or better kind of online service. But other than that, if you ride your bike like, you know, a normal riding every once in a while, you do some sort of like speeding, these bikes aren't made to go crazy on and stuff like that. As I've said, treat it as an R piece, you know what I mean? You can get to enjoy it and experience it every once in a while, but it's not something that you would daily or you would beat on or anything like that. But still, that being said, so far this bike has been pretty flawless. Uh, hasn't had like any issues, let alone major issues. Uh, the only issues I've had with this thing is the, obviously modifying it. Uh, I couldn't get like headers for anything like that, so what I did was end up making a custom exhaust. to get pulled over maybe not hey at least we didn't get pulled over good thing I had I threw my plates on I recently put it on <laughs> I had to get a custom bracket for this thing because you guys remember like the OEM mounting was horrible like it sits just like that and I absolutely hated that so I took that off right away and I was waiting for my side bracket right here and I just kept forgetting to throw on the plate because I don't ride this thing as much 2,000 miles later this bike has been absolutely amazing. I can't wait to tune it, honestly. Like, tuning it with the exhaust right now, this thing will probably feel a lot better, possibly even smoother. And it should be also faster because, you know, it's like better improved airflow and stuff like that. Low-key, one of my biggest complaints about this bike would probably be the key placement right here. I don't know why they thought this would be a good idea, but I guess it looks clean out of the way, not here. But yeah, so... <sighs> As you guys see, this is a custom-made exhaust for this bike, so we can decat that massive cat that was sitting down here. Done a tasteful amount of mods, but like simple stuff such as the mirrors. I had absolutely ugly mirrors that actually ended up completely cutting out. If you guys can see right here, it looks as good as OEM, but I absolutely love these lever guards. So I didn't want to get rid of the lever guards, which is why we just chopped off the mirror right here and we put on the Rizomas. It does look, I would say, as good without mirrors. The Rizomas don't really add to it, but I do like having mirrors. And it, do, it is kind of complementary to the lower wings as well. I definitely want to do possibly some more. Ooh, if I get this, just the centerpiece in gold, I think that would look cool. The centerpiece, I think that would look pretty cool. So I might do that in gold. And possibly a few more gold and stuff. It just it has so many, so I don't want to start this addiction again, just like my H2R and M1000. I have like a ton of gold titanium stuff because those are pretty pricey too. There you go. I was like, I know I'm forgetting something. I have to talk about that before finishing. Is So right here, we actually had to cut this, I believe, $1,500 carbon piece right here. So we can do GP shift on this thing because for whatever reason, they don't give you that option to switch it to GP shift. So you have to do the manual work and stuff like that. And also when you switch it to GP shift, you lose your auto blipper quick shifter, 
which is also another big bummer so now i have to shift manually but at least i do have gp shift as someone that is used to it and i have all, all my other bikes it matters because you know i don't want to have to get all confused and all that you guys used to hear me complain about it all the time when i get new bikes and i don't have gp shift after all one year review i don't regret it at all in the start i wasn't sure about it just i was just really frustrated i was like i can't get an exhaust for it uh, every little thing is very expensive like removing the turn signals and getting these plugs from MV even though they're tiny little machine pieces and it was just like a lot of work waiting for ports having to make a custom exhaust the quick shifter not working and all that so in the start I didn't like it as much but now that it's all done and finished the only thing that's lacking is the I would say the tune and possibly some more like titanium stuff I get to appreciate it and enjoy it more. Let's see how long she stays in the collection, hopefully for a very long time. But yeah, let me go let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys do love the rush FTs like getting rid of it and getting another bike. I might in the future actually, if I do sell it, I would probably get the Super Veloce 1000, the new one that's coming out because that's more of a super sport, but it still has that cafe look, so I still really like that. I just absolutely love this colorway. That's the main thing about this bike, it's not just the looks, it's this colorway. I think it's absolutely beautiful. You know, the taste hints of yellow, rush, carbon, you know, that gunmetal goldish color, just very tasteful. MV definitely knocked it out of the park with this one. Besides talking about, you know, the buying experience, as I said, you get a crate with a number, a certificate, everyone that worked on it. So if you want a special MV like this one, you're getting it for the experience and for the beauty, not necessarily as your daily bike or anything like that. Which, when I understood that, that's when I really loved this bike. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace on our safe.